give it on to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Thanking him for all of his many blessings and everything that he has done for us to allow us to be here in the house of the Lord or in his presence. Amen. Here on Facebook one more time. Amen. Amen. I want to give him praises for this ministry here online uh, that has endured and that has continued to grow and continue to move uh, over these last uh, two years. Amen. Amen. Well, almost two years. Amen. Amen. God has blessed us tremendously to continue the word, the preaching of the word, the praying of saints for the saints. And to continue to uh, to preach and teach the word to those who are willing to hear. Amen. I just want to say that um, I do this not for the purpose of money. I do this not for the purpose of gaining notoriety. I do this for none other reason than to give the word of God to those who are willing to listen to do the outreach of the Word of God through this particular platform and other platforms that the Lord has allowed me to use. Amen. I, um, many come to the ministry and want to preach for the purpose of a name. <laughs> the only name I, that, that means anything to me is the name of Jesus Christ. For He is the reason why I live, why I move, and why I have my being. Amen, amen. I know I've had people say, well, why don't you ask for money? And why don't you do this? Because that's not my purpose. This ministry will grow because of Christ, not because of anything that I have done, not because I'm asking or begging for anything. This ministry will grow not through big names or buildings or anything like that, but it will grow through those who listen, who are helped, through those who, are, who are listen to the word of God and seek Christ for themselves and become saved. To those who need an encouraging word, I pray that this ministry here gives you that encouraging word and gives you that push in the right, in the right direction that you need. Amen. Amen. So I just want you to know that I do this not of myself. I do this because the Lord called me and told me, do it. Until the Lord tells me otherwise or puts me in a different spot, this is what I do. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And may the Lord keep you is our prayer. Um, a little hoarse this afternoon. Uh, had to do some singing at church this morning, so <laughs> lost my voice a little bit. So if I, my voice crack a little bit while I'm speaking today, please uh, count it. Got it to my head, not my heart. Amen, amen. Uh, we're going to go into our opening scripture. Uh, we're going to say a prayer. We won't go into our uh, our prayer list today. We'll just do the opening scripture. We'll say a prayer. And then we'll go into the word of God. Amen, amen. Our opening scripture this afternoon uh, will be coming out of the book of Proverbs, uh, the ninth chapter, seventh through the 12th verses that is uh, Proverbs the ninth chapter the 7th through the 12th verses amen and Proverbs 9 and 7 reads he that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Fear the, the fear of the Lord, excuse me, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, 
and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. Again, I've read for you hearing Proverbs, the ninth chapter, the seventh through the twelfth verses. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word for edification of our souls. As I said again, we won't go into our, uh, our prayer list this week. We'll do, we'll do that next week. This week, I have a uh, special prayer for all of you who are watching and listening. Um, a friend of mine who I met in California, who was also a friend of my brother, Reverend Brian Reed, who actually Brian was a member of, of a church that he was overseer. Um, uh, Minister uh, Mark Thompson, I, Got a word yesterday that he passed away. Amen. Um, great man of God, a great preacher. I had the pleasure of hearing him a few times. And a uh, great man of God, great man of vision. The Lord has called him home. Uh, so we want to send prayers out to his family and his church family, uh, Liberty uh, Church of Christ, I believe in Detroit. Uh, we want to pray for that church family, and we want to pray for his family, the Thompson family, his mother and his children. Amen. Amen. We want to also uh, please send a prayer out to our uh, our leaders, our political leaders, and all of our uh, our church leaders, all those who are ordained by God to lead God's people. We want to pray for them. Uh, that the Lord will give them the wisdom to make the right decisions for God's people, that they follow God as the people follow them. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace that you allowed us, Lord God, to come before your presence in prayer again. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done are doing and will do in the future, Lord God. Now, Lord God, we ask you to bless the Thompson family, the, the family of uh, Minister Mark Thompson, Lord God. Lord God, a leader and a preacher of your word. We ask you, Lord God, to bless his family, his children that are left behind. We ask you, Lord God, to bless his mother. We ask you, Lord God, to give them the comfort, Lord God, to fill the gap that was left by his departure. For we know, Lord God, that when we're absent from the body, Lord God, we are with you. And, Lord God, give them the comfort to know, Lord God, that he is with you. Lord God, that he has no more pain, no more sorrow. And we ask you, Lord God, to bless all those who have lost loved ones, all those who are dealing with loss, Lord God, in this day and age, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to bless this service, to bless this ministry. I ask you, Lord God, to expand this ministry, Lord God, as you see fit. Grow this ministry as you see fit. Bless me, Lord God, that you've placed over this ministry. Use me as your instrument, Lord God. Help me to grow. Help me to blossom, Lord God. Help me to spread throughout, Lord God. To spread the word, to give the gospel, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. To set the captives free, Lord God. That, that, that some may see the light, Lord God. And come running, Lord God, and be saved and become a light themselves. As we go into your word, Lord God, this afternoon, open up hearts and minds to receive your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. These are the blessings we ask your son, Jesus, and we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Amen. Our message this afternoon, uh, familiar, uh, familiar passage of scripture, we're coming out of the book of Proverbs, same book that we read earlier, the book of Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Uh, the verses I'll be dealing with will be 1 through 13, but the verses I'm going to read will be just uh, 10 and 11, where our subject will be coming from. That's the book of Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and we're just going to read the 10th and the 11th verses. That is, again, Proverbs, the fourth chapter, uh, the 10th and the 11th verses. That 10th verse reads, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in 
right hands. This afternoon, for a few minutes, we just uh, going to talk to you from the subject, the lessons of a good father. I won't be before you long, but we're just going to talk to you about the lessons of a good father. This book of Proverbs, the authorship, is credited to Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Although the last two chapters of this particular book also have been credited to Agar and Lemuel. Solomon, the last king of a united kingdom, pins this book during his reign between 970 and 931 B.C. Chapters 1 through 24 are actual proverbs that were written by Solomon. And chapters 20, 25 through 29 were Solomon's proverbs collected by King Hezekiah. Along with proverbs, Solomon wrote the books of Ecclesiastes and the Songs of Solomon. Many of the unsaved who read this book of proverbs only see this book as a book of poetry, or for just entertainment. But this book of Proverbs is not for entertainment purposes. These Proverbs exhort, encourage, and offer hope. Solomon called readers, especially the youth, to pursue wisdom rather than foolishness. He encouraged the inexperienced to become wise rather than markers to be teachable rather than encourageable, ultimately, to live rather than to die. He, Solomon, predicted that people who pursued wisdom would generally find success and happiness in this life. But he promised that they would absolutely find joy and blessings in eternity. Merrill Unger describes Proverbs this way. The aim of the book is to present a basic moral and spiritual principle to guide the young to realize a godly, happy life here and to attain a reward in the life to come. This book, Proverbs, can be described as a manual of wisdom that is valuable and priceless in its instruction and guidance. I encouraged my sons and daughter to read this book because it really digs into the mind of the young to help them to avoid the acts of foolishness. It gives them the keys to wisdom and to a life pleasing to God. According to the Abide Bible Journal, the Proverbs are much more than philosophical. Uh, they use figurative language to assist us to live our literal lives. But the Proverbs are not quick fix, paint by the numbers, add water and stir approaches to life. Uh, they do not offer seven easy steps to become wise by Tuesday. Instead, they are precious nuggets of truth for how to conduct a well-lived life marked by meaning, purpose, and significance. The book's focus is clearly wisdom, but what undergirds it all is trust, trust in the God of the universe. This trust leads us to obedience, in, uh, which ultimately expresses itself in wisdom lived out in everyday situations and circumstances. The key verse of this book is Proverbs 1 and 7, which reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Solomon shows the contrast between a willingness to learn and a willingness not to listen and go through life aimlessly. In our text, we 
we see Solomon is giving instruction to his sons or students about the value of wisdom. Who more than he to talk about the priceless possession of wisdom? For if you remember in 2 Chronicles, the first chapter, the 7th through the 12th verse, after being crowned as king, God appeared to Solomon. Hmm. Those verses say, In that night did God appear to Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this is was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet has asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee and I will give thee riches wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had even before thee neither shall there any after thee have the like Solomon honored God with his humbleness and willingness to learn and to be a wise king over his people. He asks for nothing but knowledge. As a young king, Solomon had a thirst for wisdom. We should have the same thirst for wisdom and the word of God. Many of us have a great zeal but have no knowledge. We have the willingness but not the knowledge to fulfill the mission. It is important to ask God for wisdom and knowledge, but to, but to also seek it in the gospel for yourself. In other words, we must pick up the word of God and study for ourselves, because in the end, it is for our benefit. So verses 1 and 2 of this fourth chapter says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Solomon here shows a willingness to teach and to pass on good doctrine to his children. He not only wanted them to hear, but to also get an understanding. I know as a child at times, I can never understand why my parents stopped me from doing certain things or would not let me go to certain places. But as an adult, I understand why. Young people are full of energy and have a very idealistic view of life. They want to do and experience as much in life as they can. Then the question comes around, at what price do you want to experience this life? Is there a benefit or a consequence to, th to these life experiences? This is where parents come in. This is where the teaching of the word of God is so valuable. This is where parents need to lay the foundation. But the problem now is that so many parents are young and stupid themselves. 
their inexperience of life then is passed on to their children or they raise their children with the internet and social media. Then you have those who have experienced life but haven't learned anything. They foolishly tell their children statements like, if you only live once, enjoy your life. You're young, sow those wild oats. Fulfill every erotic or sinful desire while you're young, so you'll be ready for marriage. So many silly and dangerously bad instructions that are given to our children. It is time for parents to root their teaching and advice in the word of God. Dr. Warren Wiersbe explains these verses this way. He, or Solomon, learned wisdom from his father, who is David. And now he's passing it on to the next generation. This is the primary way God has ordained for his truth to be preserved and invested from generation to generation. Children who have godly parents and grandparents ought to give thanks to the Lord for their rich heritage instead of scoffing at that heritage and abandoning it for the way of the world. Verses 4 through 7 says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get under standing. Wisdom, it may be said, is doing the right thing at the right time for the right people with the right motive. The book of Proverbs shows us the significant difference between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. People pursuing worldly wisdom, wisdom do so to get ahead, uh, to be successful, powerful, and wealthy. Those pursuing godly wisdom want to keep God and his ways on the center stage of their lives. This book speaks the kind of wisdom that helps us to embody heavenly truth in earthly contexts. Solomon distinctly urges the young to hold on to good teaching. For we know the world is full of teachings that are not good. Solomon here not only encourages this, his young students to gain wisdom, but to also get an understanding of it. According to Dr. Wiersbe, he says, get, get wisdom suggests by wisdom. In other words, buying wisdom, B-U-Y, wisdom. Because the Hebrew word carries the idea of a commercial transaction. There's a price to pay if you want to know God's truth and obey it. Buy the truth and sell it not. Proverbs 23 and 23. Parents and grandparents can teach us but only we can receive the word into our hearts, cherish it, and pay the price to obey it. Getting instruction is one thing, but actually heeding it is another. So many of us hear the gospel every Sunday, but have yet to surrender to it. We spiritually oil ourselves like little ducks, to the point that when the word is preached, it slides off of our lives like water off of a duck's back. Because we refuse 
to open our hearts to God. Many of us wonder why we have so many problems and why we cannot see our way out. We missed the instructions. We refuse to gain the knowledge needed to handle the problems life brings on us, which causes our faith to waver. This is why we hear the word of God and study it ourselves. Knowing the word of God is vital for our spiritual survival in this world. For without it, destruction and torment is our future. Verses 8 and 9 says, Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee honor when thou doest embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Here, Solomon describes wisdom as a woman. He describes it as something or someone to be loved and cherished at all times. Then he shows the benefits of embracing wisdom and allowing it to guide the steps of those who follow her. Here, the father tells his sons to treat wisdom the way they would treat their mother, sister, or wife. Love her, that is wisdom. Honor her, embrace her, exalt her. In Proverbs, wisdom is personified as a beautiful woman who invites us to her lavish banquet. While folly is the adulteress or prostitute who tempts us to poverty and death. The one you love is the one who will control your life. Embrace wisdom and you will have security, honor, and beauty. We must understand that wisdom or knowledge is priceless. And that is knowledge of the word of God. Wisdom is priceless like a rare gem that is one of a kind. And foolishness, foolishness is like fool's gold that is shiny but worthless. We must not be fooled by the fool's gold offered by the world. Wisdom is priceless because the word of God teaches us how to be wise and how to make wise decisions according to the word. Wisdom means you have faith to know that going along with a sinful world is not profitable for your soul and its future. Wisdom says invest in your spiritual future in Christ because the return on investment is eternal life with him. Verses 10 through 14 says, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the ends of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight, and when thou runnest, Thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Hmm. Go not in the way of evil men. Hmm. Solomon in these verses makes it clear that following his instruction will give you a longer life but it also will keep you from stumbling and it will keep you on the straightened path. Many will ask why is Solomon so sure about what he has taught? 
because he has lived it himself. Solomon had experienced the benefits and consequences of good and bad choices he had made. Solomon gave them the tools to be successful with the aid of wisdom. Dr. Wearsby explains it this way. When you receive God's truth in your heart, God renews your mind and enables you to think wisely. This helps you make right decisions and experience the guidance of God day by day. God in his providence directs us and prepares the path for us. Augustine himself said, trust the past to the mercy of God, the present to his love, and the future to his providence. But King David said it better long before Augustine. David said, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalms 16 and, one, and 11. Solomon is encouraging these pupils to follow good instruction. We must be willing to follow the will of God. We must not waver from it or pick and choose which to follow and which to reject. We must take hold of all of the Lord's instruction because without it we will be lost. We will fall back into the world. We must not enter the path or way of wickedness. For in these verses the way of the wicked is described as a warning to the righteous man to beware of falling into the evil course of life. Young people, you must avoid the entrapments of this world. They may seem fun and good, but the thrill of the world does not last. You must resist the world's entanglements. The reason is the extreme peril of being infected with the dangerous and contagious disease with which these evil men are afflicted. In other words, we don't want to be tainted by this world. We must avoid being tainted by the sins of this world. We must take hold of good instruction. We must take hold of wisdom and never let her go. We must be wise in our dealings instead of foolish in our choices. We must study the word of God to be able to make wise decisions. Young people, you've got to hold on to wisdom. You must get the knowledge of the word in your soul. Because the devil desires to snatch you into this world. Fathers must teach their sons. Mothers must teach their daughters. The preacher must preach and teach the gospel. Good instruction lights your pathway. But foolishness with, will put you in the darkness. Wisdom will put you on a good path while foolishness will run you into a wall. Listen to good instruction. Listen to those who are wise. Avoid those who are foolish. Listen to good fatherly lessons. Listen to the lessons of a good father. The lessons of a good father. God bless you, and may the Lord keep you is our prayer, the lessons of a good father. There's two points I want to read again that are very, very important. First one says, good instruction lights your pathway, but foolishness will put you in the darkness. And the second one is, wisdom will put you on a good path, while foolishness 
will run you into a wall. We as parents, preachers, teachers, leaders of God's house must teach wisdom. And we ourselves must be wise. We must give wise counsel to those that are young. Because in this day and time, there's so much mess out there that they can get wrapped up in that sounds good. Pithy sayings, pithy fables, all of these things that are only there to confuse and to snatch them from us. Snatch them from God. Even in our schools, they are teaching them things that are not of God. They're trying to bring in sexual nature things into the schools to our elementary students and start them young in mess that is not of God. We must, as God's people, stand up and be wise and understand that our children have to be taught from the time they are conceived until the time they leave home. They are our responsibility. They are our gift from God. And we must lay the foundation of wisdom and the knowledge of God at a young age. So that they, when they reach the age of accountability, or when they reach the age of going out on their own, the foundation is there. Matter of fact, in the same book in Proverbs, it says, train up a child in the way that he should go, he or she should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I urge you, my brothers and my sisters, parents, leaders in the church, to seek wisdom for yourselves and then pass the wisdom and the knowledge of God to your children. Because in my opinion, that is the greatest inheritance you can give your children. No amount of money will ever surpass the knowledge of God that you can pass on to your children. God bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. Seek wisdom. Seek understanding. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I love you all very much. I truly do. I love all of you. Those who have stood by us from the beginning. Those who have watched. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your love. I appreciate your affection. I appreciate all of you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I send love, praise, and blessings to all of you for your support. And keep watching. Keep watching. Keep being blessed. And uh, please, if you have any prayers or any prayer requests, please uh, message me uh, on Facebook. And uh, on our Facebook Messenger, uh, send me a message and I will definitely get your name on the list. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to also, uh, just to all, I want us also, I didn't I say it when I prayed, but I want to say it now. I want you all to pray for uh, St. Matthew Baptist Church in Vacaville, California, Pastor Vic. I want you to pray for that church family. Amen. Amen. That the Lord will continue to bless them and strengthen them and that they may grow. Amen. 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 God bless you. All right. We are done. We are going to let you all go. But we want to reiterate to all of you to please uh, join our Facebook group, Colorblind Fellowship Church on Facebook. Also, uh, to subscribe to our Instagram, Colorblind Fellowship Church on Instagram. I'm sorry, not Instagram, uh, YouTube. <laughs> uh, Colorblind Fellowship Church on YouTube. Uh, uh, but I am on Instagram as Reverend Mark uh, 45 Senior. Amen. Amen. Please uh, look me up on there. But uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, Color by Fellowship Church on YouTube. Also subscribe to us on Rumble. Uh, that is Color Blind Fellowship Church on Rumble. Amen. So YouTube, Color Blind Fellowship Church. Subscribe Rumble. Uh, please subscribe to uh, Color Blind Fellowship church and also please look me up here on Facebook um, look at our group I always post uh, the sermons I uh, that are recorded here and I also post the YouTube link in case you all have problems reaching us here on 
Facebook. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, please keep those names, although I didn't read the names on the prayer list, keep that prayer list in your hearts and in your mind, those names. Uh, one name I want to mention, uh, Brother Dan Kuyper. Amen. As he's dealing with his uh, cancer, uh, uh, the sarcoma in his lungs. Uh, he was on my mind this morning and want to keep him in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Him, his wife, and his family and his children. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the message. Lord God, we pray that something was said that will carry those who listen along the way. Help us, Lord God, to seek understanding, to seek wisdom, Lord God, that it may strengthen us to be able to stand in this world. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Lord God, but against principalities, against rulers of darkness in this world, Lord God, that seek to destroy the church, that seek to destroy those who follow you. We ask you, Lord God, to give us the strength to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These are all the blessings I ask you in the Son of Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. God bless you. And may the Lord keep you is our prayer. We'll see you next Sunday. Same time, same place. Colorblind Fellowship Church. Look for updates. Times may change. Um, if it does, I will uh, post a message on Facebook and let all of you know. God bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. Again, I love you all. And may God bless you throughout the week. And we will see you, Lord's willing, next Sunday.